where are they? Where's Sam? Where's Grace? Last I knew, Grace was in the backyard trying to clear her head. Thanks to me. Please, don't tell me you're still feeling guilty over your role in their breakup. I'm not like you, Ivy. I don't relish seeing the people I care about in pain. I don't like to see Sam hurt either. But it's all for a good cause. Were you, like, born without a heart, or did you just lose it along the way? I have a heart, David. I just don't pay it much attention when I'm formulating strategy. Oh, okay, I suppose that's supposed to be your new term for home wrecking. Would you stop with the self-righteousness? Think of the rewards. Yeah? You can spend the rest of your life making it up to Grace for lying, as I will with Sam. You know, tonight, it couldn't have gone better if I had choreographed every step myself. So tell me the truth. Were you really deathly ill at the inn, or uh, was that just a random stroke of genius? As I said, my mind doesn't work like yours, Ivy. Unlike you, not everything I do is for effect. Well, whatever. It was a marvelous bit of luck for the both of us. We are this close to getting everything we want. You're going to get the little woman your cap is set for, and I will finally, finally have Sam. All we have to do is hold fast and stay the course. remember when we bought that bench. Yeah, we kept uh, arguing about whether we could afford it. And you were right. It's perfect. Yeah, it's um, one of the few things that survived the disaster with the other house. you never answered my question. Are you in love with David? Where did you ever come up with such a twisted question? I don't think it's twisted at all. Just direct. So, are you praying for Gwen's recovery and for the healthy delivery of your child? Or are you praying for Gwen to lose the baby so you'll be free and clear to go back to Teresa? All right, I will not even dignify that with an answer. Uh, I knew it! You men are all alike. You've never gotten over the little tart, have you? You know, if we weren't in a house of worship right now, I would tell you exactly what I think about you and your suspicious little mind, Rebecca. Ethan, now that is not a very gentlemanly way to speak to your mother-in-law. Well, titles don't command respect, Rebecca. Thoughts and actions do. Now, are you going to stay, or shall I leave? Why are you in such a rush to get away from me, huh? Is it because you find my question repellent, as you claim? Or is it because I've hit just a little too close to home for your liking? It is so tasteless and absurd. I don't even know how you could ask but I something... I think it's a perfectly logical question, if you ask me. I mean, not too long ago, you were actually all set to marry the little fajita till we found out that Gwen was pregnant. So the way I see it... You could either be praying for Gwen and your baby to be okay, or you could be praying for a romantic reunion with Teresa if Gwen should lose the baby. So which is it? Gwen, you shouldn't even be out of bed, 
All right, let me take you back there. Get your hands off of me, Teresa. And more importantly, you keep your hands off of my husband. Where is this coming from? I just want you and your baby to be all right. Oh, yeah, the hell you do. There is nothing you would like more than for me to lose this baby. That's a terrible thing to say, and it's not true. Oh, you liar. You have always wanted Ethan, and you still do. But guess what? You can't have him, okay? So stay away from him, Teresa. Stay away from Ethan. Did TC tell you the good news? I'm staying in Harmony. Damn you, Liz. And not just in Harmony. In your home. So you see, not only did you not get rid of me, but now I'm going to be closer than ever for as long as it takes to watch you go under. And when it happens, I am going to take your place and everything that you ever loved, all for myself. Of the one who could sing so sweet, and I would fly on the wings of the bird I knew could take me high as breathing, breathe out. You keep me up alive. You are the fire burning inside of me. You are my passion for life. You know I wanted you out of my house, out of harmony, out of my life. So what if I knew? You know, Eve, just because you want something doesn't mean that you automatically get it. Yeah, I wish that TC hadn't spilled the beans about my staying on. I really wanted to be the one to break the good news to you myself. Really? Like you wanted to tell me about buying the blue note from the cranes? Exactly. So you see, the only way that you can get rid of me now is to tell TC the truth about the years before you two met. But I doubt you want to do that. You may not know me as well as you think you do, Liz. I may just tell TC everything anyway. Oh, really? What parts? The part where I'm the little sister who you abandoned for drugs and sex and gin-soaked jazz joints, or, or, or the part where you fell in love with Julian Crane and then had a baby by him. Shut up, Liz. In fact, I will help you with your big confession. As a matter of fact, let's do it right here, right now. Oh, hi, you two. Can you come over here? Dr. Russell has something really important she wants to share with you. That's enough, Liz. Tell me, Ivy, how does it feel to be so cold you can only live on lies and manipulations? A hell of a lot more interesting than being you. Well, grow a spine, David. Why didn't I hire somebody with more of a backbone to play Grace's first husband? Well, sometimes I wish you had. You really were sick, weren't you? Not that you give a damn. Mm -hmm. But yes, this was the most severe bout of the disease I've had yet. Probably brought on from the stress of dealing with your cruel and calculating plan to break up two decent, loving people. Oh, now you're making me sick. How can you go on this way when, when you're so close to winning the heart of your lady fair? Uh, uh, clearly she is torn between her love for you and her love for Sam. Yeah, only because she believes that I was married to... I was married to her first. Well, that's the point, isn't it? And John, he seals the deal. She is so anxious for Johnny Boy to be her son that she's almost willing to leave Sam and restart a family with you. I wouldn't be so sure about that. You didn't see Grace's face when Sam stormed out of the room at the inn. She was devastated. She's still deeply in love with him, Sam. That doesn't mean she isn't drawn to you, David. Don't minimize the hand you're holding. Any woman would be turned on by the idea of a, a mysterious man 
coming back to her out of nowhere. And Grace is just like every other woman. She wants her cake and she wants to eat it too. I'm not that god-awful tomato soup concoction she makes. All you have to do is play up the attraction she feels for you. Satisfy that burning curiosity that we both know is growing there. Do that, and Grace will be yours. And Sam will finally be mine. I love you. I want to be with you. Since when? Grace, the last time I looked, you were being very cozy with David. Sam, I explained. He was so cold. I was afraid he would die if I didn't get him warm. Look, Sam, my life is with you. You know, we're right here. Uh, yeah. That tree. Do you remember when we first planted that tree? Right after we got married. And it is amazing that it survived the disaster with the old house. The tree is rotting, Grace. But it has strong roots, like us. And it can survive with care, just like our marriage. What marriage? It's not even valid in the eyes of the church. But our relationship is, Sam, it's, it is just as strong and solid as that bench. Well, Sam, you know, we, oh, we have so many wonderful memories here. I mean, do you remember when Kay took her very first steps? She just got tired of crawling one day and decided she could get to places faster by walking. <laughs> Those were good times. But that was then, before David. What about her future, Grace? I mean, do we even have a future to look forward to? Of course, I'm praying for Gwen and our baby. Why on earth would I be thinking about Teresa? The same reason you always put her before my daughter. Gwen and I were not married back then. And we weren't expecting a child together. <laughs> you, you, you know, sometimes I really have a hard time believing that you raised Gwen. I beg your pardon? No, I mean, how, how can... How did she manage to become... Such a caring, compassionate young woman with someone as negative and suspicious as you for a mother. Instead of accusing me of something so insultingly unfair, you should be praying with me for Gwen's recovery and for that of your unborn grandchild. Ethan, whoever it is up there has never paid a whole lot of attention to me. I make my own wishes come true in my own way. Yeah, well, maybe you'd do a little better with a little faith. Oh, I have plenty of faith in myself. If that is all that you can count on, I feel really sorry for you. Me? I will take all the help that I can get, especially when it comes to the people that I love. And I'm not thinking about Teresa. Well, even if you are not thinking about her at this moment, I guarantee you, she is thinking about you. Please, let me help you back to the bed. Teresa, I will go when I am good and ready. And I certainly can take care of myself without any pretend show of sympathy it's from you. It's not pretend, okay? It's for real. No. What's for real, Teresa, is my marriage to Ethan. And the fact that we are having a baby together and we're going to spend the rest of our lives together as a family. I am not going to lose Ethan and I am not going to lose this baby because you're going to leave us alone. You don't want to tick me off. If you only knew what I wanted to do to you. Ooh. Now that doesn't sound like the saintly Dr. Russell that everybody in Harmony thinks they know and love. No, that's reminding me of your slutty tramp years when you were a Billy Holiday wannabe. Why don't we just start with that? With your buying the blue note. If you wanted to stay in Harmony, there are a thousand other ways you could have done it. 
none so meaningful as owning the jazz club that Julian had fixed up to look exactly like the one where he met you. What do you want it for? What are you going to do with it? You think of it as a symbol. A symbol of all the bad things you've done in your life. Like leaving me with an abusive father. I just so know what he run off like. and become a drug addicted, drunken piece of arm candy for a rich yet sleazy playboy with a penchant for black women. Oh, how dare you? How dare I what, Eve? How dare I buy the blue note? Or how dare I tell you about yourself? Well, how dare you ruin my life and try and get away with it? Time to pay the piper, sister. You know, I, I don't know where you get your ideas from. Teresa is not thinking of me that way anymore. <laughs> you men really are blind when it suits you. No, no, not at all. Look, look, I admit, Teresa had a hard time when I decided to marry Gwen instead of her. But she has gotten over those feelings by now. And she understands how committed I am to Gwen and our baby together. Please. Look, the only reason that Teresa has backed off at all is because she realizes she'd look like the harlot she is now that Gwen is pregnant. But if Gwen were no longer pregnant, oh, I promise you, Teresa would move in on you faster than an alley cat on a can of tuna. Dr. Russell said that you need to stay calm so you can deliver a healthy baby. Don't act as if you care about this baby. I know that you want nothing more than for me to lose it so you can go chase after Ethan in the open again. I'm gonna get a nurse, okay? I don't want a nurse, Teresa. I just want you out of my sight. All right, I'm gonna get Ethan. He, he can calm you down, okay? Have you heard one word I said? Stay away from Ethan. You're not gonna go anywhere, Teresa, until I get it through your head, okay? Ethan is mine, and you are gonna leave him alone. Look, just because Grace is curious about me doesn't mean she's gonna throw away the life she's built with Sam. Right, well that shows how much you know. It's not your fault. Men, you don't know the first thing about women. David, you are the mysterious stranger who, who came into her life out of nowhere. The handsome photojournalist who's been around the world and back several times. The man she thinks is her first husband with whom she believes she had a child. Yeah, but, but that's all lies. I am not married to Grace. John is not David, her David, son. David, 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 how many times do I have to tell you that that's just a mere technicality? Can't you see what a temptation you are to her? Sexy, handsome, mysterious, more obtainable than forbidden fruit because in the eyes of the church, Grace believes you're still married. But she still loves Sam. And she's intrigued by you. All you have to do is play upon that inner turmoil, that confusion. You know, feed on that desire to remember what the two of you shared. Do that, and Grace will be yours. All yours. Grace, you say you love me. You talk about all the history that we've had together, right? All the, the lives that we've built here in Harmony, our family. Sam, you, us, our children, you're my reason for living. Grace, I used to believe that, but I don't anymore. Why not? I, I guess it's just all the evidence that's right in front of my nose. Grace, when, when, when something, someone is so important to you, you don't just risk losing it to explore old feelings. Sam, I explained to you why I had to go away with David, how I ended up in his bed. You, you explain and explain, but you haven't answered the simple question I've been asking you without beating around the bush. I'm just trying to be honest. Okay. 
Let's try it again. Do you or do you not love David Hastings? You know, just because that you wouldn't think twice about breaking up a marriage to get the man that you wanted does not mean Teresa would do the same. <laughs> Are you serious? I could take husband-stealing lessons from that little number. All right, that is enough, okay? What? No, because I have to lay this out right in front of you because you obviously cannot see what's right in front of your nose. <sighs> I can't believe I have to spell it out to you again. We all know Teresa would come after you. The real issue here is what are you going to do if she does? Are you going to stay with Gwen and honor your marriage vows, or are you going to succumb yet again to Teresa? Please, let me just get someone, okay? They, they can give you a shot, and, and they can calm you down. I don't want to calm down, Teresa. I just want you to get it through your thick head that you and Ethan are over. You're finished. He's never going to be with you because he's going to spend the rest of his life with me. Why is that so hard for you to understand? I didn't say it was. I, Teresa, Ethan loves me. I am his wife. And okay, okay, fine. You know, maybe it did take my getting pregnant for Ethan to realize that he loves me more than you, but he does. He does love me more than you, and he's told me, he's told you, he's told Father Lonigan, I mean, and, you know, even if, even if, God forbid, something happens to this baby I'm carrying, nothing's gonna change between Ethan and me, you know, so your, your whole coming over here was, was just a really big fat waste of time. Gwen, please, just, just listen to me, all right? Okay, I, I didn't come down here to cause trouble between you and Ethan, okay? I heard that there was a medical emergency on the Crane estate, so I just came to see who was hurt. Okay, so that's it. I mean, you, you thought Ethan was hurt, so you came rushing over here to his bedside to see if you could help, even though that's my rightful place. Just admit it, Teresa. It was Ethan who brought you over here. Okay, Gwen. You are right. No, I, I did come down here because I thought Ethan was in trouble. Are you happy now? You are my passion for life. Why should you buy in the blue note mean anything to me anyway? Because it's a constant reminder of the things that you don't want to be reminded of. You see, I wanted to guarantee the preservation of the place that represents your deepest shame. That is so sick. Oh, Edna, what did Mama teach us to say? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. And how many times do I have to tell you that I never meant to hurt you? And how many times do I have to tell you that it doesn't matter? You did. You hurt me so much that there is nothing I can do to make up for the pain that you caused me. But the blue note's a start. Yes, I can't wait for TC and Simone and Whitney, if she's still in town, to realize what kind of woman you really are. Yeah, Eve. The Blue Note is a living monument to your life of lies. Of course I wouldn't leave Gwen. We have a strong, committed marriage with a baby on the way. Right, and we are looking forward to having a family together. I mean, I would never walk away from anything like that. Wrong answer, Ethan. What do you... What are you talking about? I thought that's what your little suspicious mind wanted to know. I asked what you'd do if Gwen lost the baby. If there wasn't a family to look forward to raising together. Ethan, why couldn't you say that you'd stay with Gwen? Because, because you loved her with all your heart, baby or no baby. basically admitted it. You didn't say 
that you'd stick with Gwen no matter what because Teresa still has a chance with you. All she needs is a teeny, weeny little opening and she is gonna pry the two of you apart again. Ethan, you've proved my point. Look, I know you're very, very fond of Gwen. But you don't love her the way that she deserves to be loved. Just admit it. I know it's true. Well, finally, a glimmer of honesty from the world's smoothest liar. It's not what you think, Gwen. No? You heard someone on the crane grounds was sick enough to go to the hospital, and you were so terrified it was Ethan that you quickly found someone to babysit your son, who, by the way, you had no business naming after my husband, just so you could rush over here and hang all over Ethan's bedside. You must have been so disappointed when you found out he was only here to take care of me and our unborn baby. How dare you suggest what is going on in my mind? How dare you even show up here at all? You have no right to be here, even if Ethan had been sick or injured, Teresa. That is my place, and you know it. Ethan is committed to me for the rest of our lives, no matter what, even if, heaven forbid, I lose this baby. So you back off. You back off, or I promise you, you will be sorry. Okay, look, let's say that some small part of Grace is tempted to be intimate. <laughs> some small part, David? Small part? The woman climbed into bed with you naked just because you had a temperature. She wants you, David. She wants to make love to you. She just doesn't know it yet. Yeah, I just hate the idea of taking advantage of her. Well, get a grip, David. That's sort of the point, to take advantage of her vulnerability to make her yours. You've got to get her back into bed, only... Minus the fever and chills this time. Okay, let's see I succeed. What if Grace feels so guilty about cheating on Sam? Again! That... David, that's sort of the point. Grace will feel so riddled with guilt over making love to you that she'll never be able to face Sam again. It's a win-win situation, David. You win, I win. What more do you want? Sam, I'm sorry, but please don't walk away from me, from us. I don't want to. I just want to know where you stand. I need to know that you trust me. That you believe I didn't go away with David to have an affair with him. That you believe I was only in bed with him because he was sick. You've never lied to me in all the years that we've been married. So yes, I believe you, if that's what you say. But Grace, it's just the beginning. If our relationship has any chance of getting back on track, I need to know that you're gonna keep being honest with me. I know. So let's try it again. Do you love me? the same way you loved me before David Hastings came to town. I've told you before, you stay away from my daughters. And you stay away from TC. Actually, Eve, I'm very fond of your daughters. Especially Whitney. I think that I'm going to be spending a great deal of time with her in the near future. Why? What could you possibly have to say to her? Stupid question. Isn't Whitney going to L.A. with Chad, where she hopes to try her luck at being a singer? You know very well she is, and you know that's not a life that I want for her. Yes, but Eve, you're the one who put singing in her blood. Personally, I think that Whitney has a much better voice than you ever did, but that's neither here nor there. Either way, I think she has a very good future in music if she wants. And I don't think it's going to take her very long to snag an agent. 
get a recording contract. And I imagine that the agent will probably want to book her on a road tour, just so our audiences can get to know her. That's where the Blue Note comes in. I was thinking that I would book her into the Blue Note so she could get her feet wet in almost the same surroundings as you did. You know, if your daughter is going to be like you, then she's going to need a place to get started. Started drinking, started doing drugs, started having sex with older men. I thought that you cared about Whitney. I do. Problem is, I hate you more than I love her. Watch it, Eve. Oh, you watch it. You harm my daughter in any way at all, and I will kill you. You could not be more off base, Rebecca. Of course I love Gwen. That is why I married her. You, you know what? I'm not talking about this with you anymore. Fine, you don't have to listen to me. I am just trying to protect my daughter. Gwen has been hurt enough by Teresa, and as I told her, I don't ever want to see it happen again. Wait, Rebecca, wait a minute. You haven't voiced any of this to Gwen, have you? I mean, you, you haven't told her that you think I will leave her for Teresa if she loses the baby, have you? Of course I have. The last thing I want is for my daughter to be blindsided by that two-face again. Gwen, as if she didn't have enough to worry about with the baby. Damn you, Rebecca! Cat got your tongue? Not at all. Gwen, you may be Ethan's wife but I'm still his friend. And when and if something ever does happen to him, I have every right to be there. Just like I would if Whitney or Chad were in trouble. There is a big difference, Teresa. You didn't name your baby after Whitney or Chad. Listen, I don't know if you're being dense on purpose or not, and I really don't care, okay? The only thing that I really, really care about is that from here on in, you stay away from Ethan. Just don't you think you're overreacting a little? I mean, despite what you think, I'm not a horrible monster out to cause problems between you two. The last thing that I want is for you to lose that baby for any reason. Oh, right, sure. It's true. So yes, I did come here because I thought that Ethan was in trouble. But once I found out that he wasn't, my only concern was you. You are such a liar. You just cannot stop lying. <gasps> Teresa, from the moment you stepped into my life, you've had one goal and one goal only, and that's to destroy it. You almost did too, more than once, and it is not gonna happen again. Christ, these aren't difficult questions. At least they shouldn't be. Do you feel the same love for me that you did before David Hastings came into our lives? Sam, I... <sighs> I'm not gonna answer. And what if it's the station? <sighs> Just take a second. Mm. Chief Bennett. Yeah, Luis, what's going on? What? Yeah, right, okay, I'm on my way. What happened? Sharon Crane's been kidnapped. Oh, my God. But after everything that they've been through, it's like no matter what they do, something is separating them. I gotta go. Yeah, of course. I'll be back. To stay? That depends on the answer to my question. I need to know whether we're... One of those couples that can't seem to catch a break like Luis and Sheridan. Or whether we've got a shot at a happy ending. It is one thing to want to hurt me, but I swear I will not let you hurt my daughter. What are you going to do to stop me, Eve? I don't particularly want to ruin Whitney's life. But if that's what it takes to get your attention, I will do it.
The last thing that Gwen needs right now is to worry about Teresa coming after me. Well, I didn't tell Gwen to upset her. I told her so she'd be prepared for any eventuality. Look, it is my job, my duty as her mother. Protect her. To do everything in your power to keep her relaxed and unworried while she gets through this difficult and complicated pregnancy. I really don't think my giving Gwen some motherly advice is going to determine whether or not she gives birth to a healthy child. And one of the hallmarks of Gwen's and my relationship is our complete and unflinching honesty. Something you might want to consider being with yourself. You are unbelievable. And I could say the same thing about you. You know, you could save us all a lot of time and a lot of heartache if you would just realize that your ex-girlfriend is a man-grabbing slut. Trust me, Ethan, if Gwen loses this baby, Teresa is going to be sniffing around you in two shakes. All right. I'm going to go check on Gwen to make sure you haven't made her feel worse. She needs to know how much I value our marriage. Oh, Ethan. You've said nothing to allay my suspicions. If Gwen loses this baby, she's going to lose you, too. Your whole life, you have had one goal, and that's to marry Ethan. You have schemed, plotted, manipulated. Just stop it. Why? Gwen. Why? Why? Why does the truth hurt, Teresa? Stop acting so innocent when you and I both know what your real motives are. You are nothing but a scheming, manipulative, two-faced bitch. You know, you don't know anything about me, okay? You're not the only one who suffered in this world. I had Ethan. He was gonna marry me, and then you turned up pregnant. You took away the one thing that I ever wanted. I love Ethan, Gwen, and you know what? You are right. I do want him back. I have a deal for you, Liz. If you're half as shrewd as I think you are, you take it. Do you still love her? I mean, do, do you still love Teresa? No.